Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to a bloody quick way through this honor two. Last time we killed off uh, Brianna Ashworth, the curator of the Royal Conservatory, and right now we need to head towards our next target, which is Aramis Stilton. Let's talk to Anton Sokolov for our mission briefing. Lila can't be killed. Everything we've learned implies that something strange happened at Aramis Stilton's home three years ago, but then he disappeared. Stilton lived in a bunker kept secure by a fancy lock made by Jindosh. Maybe inside you'll learn more about how to stop Delilah. But I have to get there first. Through a ruin created by the Duke, where my father grew up. Megan had an intriguing idea. Paolo is leader of the Howlers. He wants Vice Overseer Byrne killed. And of course, Byrne wants Paolo dead too. Both groups will attack you on sight, but walk in with the corpse of their chief enemy, and they'll treat you like family. You think they'll help me get into Aramis Stilton's home? I'm pretty sure that will work. He's pretty sure that will work. Being this place and these people, I can feel my perspective changing. How will I be different after this? So we're heading over there to the Batista Overlook in the Dust District. And it's, uh, well, it's sort of a mining uh, area where the people have uh, all been starting to die off because of the silver dust that's uh, wiping uh, through the city from the mines, which of course is what uh, Duke Luca Abel is using to uh, gain more and more wealth. Ready now? We are, and now we're going on the skiff with Sokolov. Get you as close as I can. There we go. Who was the man I'm after? Aramis Stilton? An ally to the old Duke. Loyal and smart. Stilton helped build modern Karnaka with those silver mines. Started as a miner, and worked his way up until he was a prince of industry. Now, the new duke drives the mine crews night and day. Dust falls non-stop onto the district. What was once prosperous is now in ruins. I suppose the duke doesn't care, as long as he sips from silver cups. And what are the cups at Dunwall Tower made from, Empress? Point taken. In case you have to pass through the dust district to reach Stoughton's home, maybe he's still in there, or maybe he's dead. So nobody has heard from Aramis Stilton in a long time, but uh, we first need to get through the Dust District and through his uh, fancy lock on the door that was made by Kieran Jindosh himself. Once you reach the Dust District, she'll tell you more. So uh, Megan is already in the Dust District, district God damn it, and is uh, who we need to talk to next, which is not going to take long because I don't. Oh yeah, right, we do have that. We do have that area, I kind of forgot about that. Of course, another wall of light. This shouldn't take long. You hide your face, coward! And there we go, there goes the first one. Anywhere. Oh. I'll tell you the beat. You've been found. Let's get the gun out. There we go, there goes his head, and then this guy goes down as well. Okay, quick and bloody, the way we like it. Not exactly stealthy, but uh, we did get the, get the life out of them. So again, a wall of light, it's a bit repetitive, of course, but uh, I think we can just turn it off now, since everybody's dead. Because I think there were only four guards, if I recall correctly. So we just need to get to the lid. And I don't know if I actually can just destroy it, but let's just go in here, pick up the health and the bullets, open up the security panel and rewire it because we have four rewiring tools. And then wait until the noise was made and then we can get through the kick because uh, the lights are now green. There we go and I think there's a bit more stuff in here. And since we're in the, sil the, the, the dust district, every now and again there's a a dust storm raging through this part of town and that just means that visibility is reduced to practically nothing. But let's move on and have a little chat with Megan. There we go. Who are you talking to, Megan? I 
I've been doing reconnaissance, talking to people. The Overseers and the Howlers have divided up the district. Just ahead is neutral territory where no one will harass you. But further on, the Howlers and the Overseers both have boundaries set up. And beyond those points, they'll attack you on sight. Aramis Stilton is the real goal. Sokolov said you had an idea. Yes. I believe that if you take out Paolo or Vice Overseer Byrne, the other one will grant you safe passage and will help you get inside Stilton's home. Neutralize either one of them and bring him to the other. What else do you know that might help me? Byrne is protected by the Overseers. Paolo has the Howlers. But I think he's also got some kind of black magic charm. They say he's got to die twice before the sun sets, or he can't be killed. Good luck with that. And that is, of course, our uh, next objective, because, uh, as I mentioned before, I need to kill Paolo three times, and this is why that is possible. You need to kill him twice in the same day, or he doesn't die. And since we only killed him once previously, we need to kill him twice today. So let's go and do just that. I'm just going to show you the lock on the door, because it's right here. Those two people are trying to open it up. Uh, never mind. Maybe another time. Or not. Let's go. The lock is actually a combination lock of five names and five symbols. You can actually solve that yourself if you want to solve the Jindosh riddle right over here. Which is uh, a little bit of a story of five ladies wearing certain colors, drinking certain things and having certain objects where they came from. And with all that information is just enough to start deducing who has which object and then you can uh, just solve it like that. But we need to kill Paolo so uh, let's just do it the easy way. So if you enter the district, the dust district from over here you can see the howlers are over there on the left. And there are a lot of them. So we need to get through that if you want to get to Paolo. And then over there on the right, if you keep going in that direction, you actually reach the Overseers. Um, since we need to kill Paolo, we're going to go for the uh, the Howlers, of course. But first, let's have a little look-see in here. Hello, good sir. Uh, can I actually... You know what? Let's save this guy. Let's just not kill this man. And just knock him out. Unconscious. There we go. Ow! I'm sorry. Gl glad he survived that. It doesn't look like something he should have... Okay, sorry. Sorry, sir. So, we got a bit of a rewiring tool from that. Um, now, normally, you should be able to just climb up here. Climb up here like that. And you would be able to... I don't know if I can actually reach that. Oh, I can. Okay. So, we can get through this building, because from now on, we're, I think, if I just go over here, so that's the saloon we need to enter. Uh, we're in hostile territory from here on out, so uh, let's have a little look-see. Let's get the gun out, and start shooting some nests. These guys still seem aggressive, although that seems to be fine, so let's just clear out the building and move forward. So moving along the pipes we can get to the next building which actually houses a nest keeper. But if we just zoom in with our perfect aiming we should be able to headshot them twice. There we go. Then, because nest keepers are a bit more resilient than any other enemies. I think most of these are inactive. Just gonna take them out anyway. Is there one over here? No. So let's just move along a bit. Okay, there's another one. Okay. Probably because I'm going so aggressively. There we go. Two arrows does the trick. And I think that's it. Aside from the blood amber I can actually pick up. There we go. Yeah, we're on the other side now. Now I'm really curious if I can actually make the jump. Because we need to head towards the saloon now. Looks like I can. So hostile territory. There we go. And there's supposed to be one guy around here, I think. Yeah, there he is. If I just slowly, because he's smoking. There we go. First howling down. And now, we need to be careful about this, because this building has an immense amount of howlers inside of it. But we also have the advantage of seeing Paolo from up here. So the howlers are uh, playing a bit of music. Having fun. 
Uh, but I do need to be careful because I think there's one more guy in this building. Or not, because this is Paolo's office. So obviously, we want to try... This must be Paolo's yeah, place. Try and take him out here. And I know that when we kill him... So we're going to take the paintings, the runes, and that's going to get us to the outsider again. Which I'm actually just going to skip because it's not really interesting usually. Although it's about Paolo, so let's, let's let this run. In case you're wondering, Paolo's not one of those unhinged cultists who believe I will grant them favors if they leave a big enough offering or play just the right musical notes. He doesn't care a fig for me. But... He put up this shrine because he found the hand of an old witch I knew once. And Paolo saw right away that it pays to have an edge. Sometimes, pieces of us linger long after we're gone. The Duke of Circonos inherited a vibrant city and wasted no time stripping it to the bone. What will he leave behind? And what about you? Who will you leave to pick up the pieces here in the Jewel of the South? Hinting at what we could do with the Duke, which is not what we're gonna do. And there's another dust storm. So yeah, Paolo is in possession of a sort of old decaying hand of a witch he once killed. And it's that piece of the witch that actually keeps him alive. But only once. Only once. So, um... I know actually that when you kill Paolo, he teleports towards his office here. So if you just leave us a little spring razor here, uh, that, that should take care of everything really, really quickly. So, the plan is to just have him... Oh, you know what? That might actually not work. Although, I don't think the spring razors in their normal form actually destroy corpses. So let's just try and get a better vantage point. Because from here we can actually see Paolo... Oh. That's weird. Normally Paolo is in that chair. That chair over there listening to the music. So that means he's probably behind the bar. Um, There's a bit more piping over there so I can get a better view. Just be careful not to punch the bottle. Oh crap. Where's Paolo? Yeah, the music is a bit bugged, so every time you look away, it stops actually playing. Um, well then, he's not behind the bar. And I don't see him anywhere else as well. Interesting. So that means we're gonna have to go on a bit of a killing spree. So there's one howler sleeping over here, but... Okay, so there's one guy over there there we go head removed we have plenty of uh, crossbow bolts and i think there's a few we can actually pick up as well oh i got a prompt got a prompt where's the prompt give me the prompt you know what there we go don't think that was silent but let's just go through this door and there seems to be nobody here, but of course there's a big chest with a bit of gold and silver and silver pocket watch. There we go. That's stuff that we do that for, because that's a lot of money right there. And then the metal crate, which actually just, yeah, throws all the glasses. And I think, yeah, more pistol bullets and the spike grenade housing. There we go. And then we have that guy that's sitting at the chair, which we can easily kill normally. Because we know the secret place to kill sitting people from, which is right underneath the armpit. Right over there somewhere, right? There it is. There it is. Down he goes. They stopped singing for a second, but I don't think that's because they know where I am. Oh, there he is. Now he's in his chair. Goodbye, Paolo. So now, if I just start running, there we go, assassinated, because he just tripped on the on the spring razor. There we go. Don't think they know where I am just yet. 
Just gonna wait until one of them comes up. And there we go, place of three deaths. Just need to have a, have a look at his corpse. Come on. Okay, she doesn't seem to be coming up. So let's just check on Paolo's corpse. Which I hope was not eviscerated. No, it's not. Okay, that's great. So let's loot this corpse. And yeah, there's the hand what? of the witch. Which is still alive for some reason. So let's smack that into pieces. And quickly carry his corpse. Because I don't want to have that decaying. I actually forgot the health elixir here. Oh, I can't carry anymore. Bye, mommy. So now we need to just pick up the corpse. And head back out of the building. Which we can do the same way we came in. And then we sneak our way outside the building. Oh, God. They're gonna be mad. They're gonna be mad. So I might have to put Paolo's corpse down for a second. Although I think if I get to make that jump. No, 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 no. Ooh, blueprint. Forgot about that blueprint. Because I don't think, if I just drop down and hide behind here, I should be fine. Just jump over the railing. There we go. Oh god, these guys are angry. These guys are all angry. These guys are all angry. Doesn't seem like they're really mad at me, but... Hello. Hello, overseers. Hello. 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 Yeah, okay, they're letting me pass because I have Paolo's corpse on my back. Nope. You stand accused of actions forbidden by the teachings of the Abbey of the Everyman. Oh. Given that each crime was witnessed or later verified by sworn and faithful... Okay, he's, they're, they're just going to shoot these guys. I'm just no going to wait until the execution. But we're going to head in right here and do the Overseer's outpost, which we can just enter because we have, some, for some reason, a corpse on our back, which makes us a bit more trustworthy to these guys. Uh, as you can see, there's even more uh, Overseers in this place than they are... Howlers in the Howler Saloon, so I think we just went for the best option. So let's just go in here and have a little chat with Vice Overseer. Is that Ur Paolo? Burn, I think. Is Hello, we have a corpse for you, sir. There you go, you on your nice you floor. Got. With Paolo out of the way, I've got big plans for Kanaka. I've heard about you and your ambitions, Vice Overseer Burn. But for me, this was a means to an end. Does the Abbey remember its friends? Yes, we do. And our enemies. What is it you want? I need to get into Aramis Stilton's home. Now that's a curious thing to want. There's something very wrong with Stilton's house. It's actually a great concern to me. I need to know what happened there. Help me, and you'll benefit again. Thanks to the Duke, we've lost our proper place here in Karnaka. And we've been fighting just to hold the streets against the heretic Paolo. But you stopped his black heart for me. And for that, I'll give you what you want. I'm listening. Interrogating one of the Howlers, we learned that some of them knew how to open up the Jindosh lock and enter Aramis Stilton's home. Probably just Paolo and a trusted few. What you're looking for is probably connected to why the Duke had Karen Jindosh seal up Stilton's home. All right, then. This might be the most worthwhile visit I've ever paid to the Abbey. I'll remember your help, Vice Overseer Burn. Thanks for the note. As will I, Assassin. So there we go. Take our friends friend with away. the Overseers. And he says take our friend here away, but we can actually just explore uh, as much as we want. Because you can actually actually take these guys' possessions, which is not something I'm going to do, but it's still still interesting. But it's weird that the AI still freaks out about open doors, etc. Even though, of course, they allow us to be here. Um, but yeah, that's also another thing to note is I don't really know why Kirin Jindosh would design the door to be openable in the first place. Because the riddle is not that complicated if you just write everything down and match what you can actually match uh, information-wise. But uh, still, why, why make a lock that you can actually open up? If the point of it is to just Abello, stay... Uh... Sure you know what you're doing? Okay, I think I tripped. I, I actually... Oh, yeah, I'm activating trips. 
But isn't there? No, that's food. What? Somebody's not feeling well. And I'm going to open sure that up. Something going on. <laughs> Next time. Oh, there's a howler here. There we go. <laughs> I just chopped her in half. Uh, so they're still all freaking out about me killing the howlers. And that means I can just move out because, yeah, over here is free territory, neutral territory. So, yeah, if the, if the point of the door, the door is just to keep everybody out, it's just to lock up the mansion, why just not make it openable? Because uh, once you have the solution, it's actually pretty, pretty easy. So, Lady Winslow, ring. And then we have Dr. Marcola, Marsola with the diamonds and that opens up the door opens up all the pistons and everything it worked the information was correct of course it was otherwise the game would have been broken there we go through the door uh 12 hostile skilled and detected 13 times with 10 body detection don't know what exactly because I rarely got detected. Aside from the, the exiting the building. Yeah, I got detected a few times by those guys. That just saw me carrying Paolo on my back. That must have been it. And uh, there we go. The theocratic support sided with the vice overseer instead of Paolo. You can actually complete this mission with by siding with neither of them. Uh, you can actually also take both of them out and just solve it yourself. Or just find a solution in Paolo's uh, office as well. Uh, well, I think it's the, the office of his right-hand man who betrayed him, but you can find the code there anyway. Time is an odd thing. Growing up, I was excited about what the years might hold. About the Empire I'd someday rule. I recall childhood moments with my mother on her throne and my father, a figure of mystery. I remember the rat plague, my mother's murder, and all that happened at the Hound Pits pub. Now this. I just want to put an end to Delilah's life and get my father back. This house holds Delilah's secrets. She pulled herself up from tragedy, grabbing the Empire and changing it to her liking. With Duke Luca Abel, she transformed a coddled dilettante into a schemer who helped her take my throne. She's made herself immortal, and even my father's sword couldn't stop her breath. I'm going to find out how she did these things. The next time someone shoves a sword through her heart, it'll be me, and I expect her to die. So there we go, I expect her to die. Again, different dialogue than what you would get if you're uh, a bit more nicer to people. And there we have the, the manor, but uh, this is actually the end of chapter 6, because the Dust District is its own chapter. So now we're at chapter 7, so I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching a bloody quick raid through Dishonored 2. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.